Funding for Shaper Illus is provided by Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video. So I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart recently because of the Ninja Hideaway and Friends pack being added to 8 Deluxe, and I noticed that I always tend to gravitate towards the same characters when playing this game. Which made me wonder, what if I ranked every character that's ever been in Mario Kart? Not in terms of stats or anything, but just in terms of how much I like their inclusion and playing as them overall. Who are the coolest character additions over the course of the series? Who are the lamest additions? Why the fuck was Rob in Mario Kart DS? All these questions and more will hopefully be answered in this ranking video. I've played every game in the series except for Arcade GP and GP2, so I just looked up footage of the characters exclusive to those games in order to get a feel for them for the purpose of this list. I also did that with most of the tour characters because said characters are locked behind the gotcha mechanic. And I do not want to waste money trying in vain to get them. Nor do I want to play tour any longer, it's very bad. Also I should probably specify, all the alternate costume versions of pre-existing characters from tour, like Musician Mario or Vampire Wario or what have you, will not be included in this list because that would be ridiculous. But the alternate costume characters who first appeared in mainline Mario Karts, like Tanuki Mario and Cat Peach, those are fair game, as are all the original characters Tor added. So with all that said, let's begin the ranking. I've separated all the characters into tiers, starting with the D tiers. The characters I would not be caught dead playing in a million years. Let's -a go! <laughs> You know, I was gonna rank that Mario Kart character last, but then I remembered Peachette exists in Mario Kart Tour and she's technically an original character, not an alt costume. So congratulations, Peachette! You're the worst character in Mario Kart history. I guess she was technically part of a mainline Mario game, but she absolutely shouldn't have existed there and it's no different here. She's so boring. You're just playing as Peach with a slightly different dress and hair. Yeah, she's an inoffensive addition to the tour since it's already loaded with alternate costume versions of pre-existing characters. But that's the thing. Why would you ever choose to play as Peach Ed if you happen to have access to so many other cooler costume options for Peach? The only compliment I can give this thing is that they actually gave her a unique voice in tour that sounds like a mixture of Peach and Toadette. Yeah, got you! Just like a prince! It's a nice detail, but it can't save such a worthless inclusion through and through. I'm certain that if she showed up in a mainline Mario Kart, people would be livid. Speaking of which, everyone has their own pink gold peach story. I'll never forget the day I first heard of this diabolical creature's inclusion in Mario Kart 8. I thought it was an elaborate farce, but I was wrong. This horrific abomination was here to poison the well of the Mario Kart franchise for nearly a decade to come. I'll just never understand the thought process behind this thing. According to the Mario Wiki, the character was created to satisfy the need of a female heavyweight in the Mario Kart 8 roster. Who was asking for a female heavyweight, Nintendo? Name one person who wanted that! And was Rosalina not a female heavyweight in Mario Kart Wii? And is she still not a heavyweight? If you really needed two female heavyweights, could you not have either found a cool deep cut obscure character, or just make a unique original character? Character, like how you invented Toadette for Double Dash? Or just f***ing bring the Honey Queen back? I don't know! We really needed Metal Mario 2? Like, Metal Mario was popular in 7 because A, he was a pre-existing deep cut reference edition and not something the developers pulled out of their asses. And B, people mainly just used him because he had the best stats in 7, not because they like his character. Nobody in the history of the cosmos asked for or wanted Pink Gold Peach. Even the name is so haphazard and terrible. Like, why is she not called Rose Gold Peach? At least that sounds more elegant and less stupid. Oh god, why am I even talking about this? I don't need to justify this placement. You know exactly why she sucks. Let's just move on. And rounding out D tier is all five babies. I'm sorry, I can't enjoy any of them. The baby shtick is so oversaturated at this point that I can't stand the sight of them. I generally don't like playing as small characters in Mario Kart anyway. Usually with my character preference, the bigger the better, so that's another knock against them there. And finally, how are these babies driving? 
babies can't drive in real life, unlike monkeys, turtles, and dinosaurs, which totally can. So I'm taking off more points for how unrealistic the babies are. Anyway, don't worry. Even though I dislike them all equally, it's not a five-way tie or anything. I still have a ranking for them. The worst one is Baby Rosalina, whose mere existence kind of messes with the pre-established canon from Mario Galaxy, and who exists as the last straw in terms of my tolerance for these characters' inclusions. She also feels like a lazy reskin of Baby Peach, the next worst baby, essentially only because I don't like regular Peach that much. In fact, from here on out, the ranking for the rest of the babies just corresponds to how I feel about their adult version. Next up is Baby Mario. I never liked him in Yoshi's Island anyway. After that is Baby Daisy. Regular Daisy is pretty cool, and I like the orange color scheme here. And the most based baby is Baby Luigi. He gets bonus points because he grows up to be the coolest motherfucker in the entire Mushroom Kingdom. So yeah, that's the baby ranking. They all stink, and the only good thing they gave us was Baby Park. Which in Mario Kart 8 includes a statue of pink, gold, baby peach. A horrific omen for what the future has in store for us? Maybe, I don't know, who cares? We're done with the D tiers! Those are all the characters I straight up do not pick. Now let's move on to C tiers. The characters I'll play as maybe once in a blue moon. Okay guys, just stay with me on this one. One of the most boring characters you could possibly pick in any Mario Kart game is Mario. Like, seriously. It's like Donkey said that one time. Who's the last guy any self-respecting human being would pick in Mario Kart? Mario. Like, legitimately, I just can't think of a single reason to ever play as him. Don't you get enough of playing as him in the mainline games? Why would you ever pick him in a spin-off that gives you access to so many other characters you never get to play as? Like Light Blue Shy Guy. Even when I play Mario Kart with some of my non-gamer friends, they usually gravitate towards characters like Yoshi or Peach. I'm telling ya, nobody wants this plumber man for real. His animations and voice lines are usually generic and forgettable compared to the rest of the cast. He's just the white bread of Mario Kart, whose inclusion on the roster feels like more of an obligation than anything. He's not ranked this low for being a bad character, but he's just an empty void of an inclusion in every Mario Kart game he's in. But don't worry, Mario's not alone here at the bottom of C tier because Peach is here to keep him company. Yeah, I've just never really been a big fan of the princess, who's almost always a bland, inoffensive addition to every non-RPG game she's in. Mario Kart is no exception. Like, I can't even pretend to care about her when she's usually seated next to one or two far better princesses on each roster. And much like Mario, the oversaturation of her variants on the roster doesn't do her much good in terms of winning my favor. I think it's more understandable for someone to want to pick her compared to Mario, but she's definitely nowhere near a go-to character for me. I kind of like her voice clips in Mario Kart 64 for some reason though. Here we go! Alright, pop quiz. Who is the most forgettable character in Mario Kart? The answer is Tony Soprano. He was in Super Circuit the whole time, and no one even noticed or talked about him ever. But the second most forgettable character is Paratroopa. He's only ever appeared once in Double Dash, and he never returned since. Not even in Tor, a game that loves adding in random bullshit variations of pre-existing characters. I don't even know what I should say here. He's just Koopa with wings. He's not really all that exciting. But I wouldn't mind if he came back as an alt costume for regular Koopa. I think I heard somewhere that Windy O. Koopa is the least popular or least used Mario Kart 8 character, and while I couldn't find anything to back up that claim, I nonetheless would not be shocked at all if it were true. There's just not much to enjoy with Windy. I've always found her design to be kinda ugly, and her color scheme really clashes, and yeah, I don't know, I kinda forgot she's even in the game, despite the fact that I play as some of her brothers a ton. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use her online either, just... It's windy, who cares? You might be surprised to see Cat Peach so relatively not low compared to the other Peach variants. Well, the reason is simple. If I feel like playing as Peach, I might as well play as her with unique cat-like animations. It's more interesting than just vanilla-ass Toadstool. Yeah, the animations saved this one a bit, but ultimately, I don't think they're pronounced or cool enough to fully justify the inclusion of Cat Peach in the roster. Still, like I said, on the rare occasions when I'm in a Peachy mood, this is the version of her I'm picking. I'm deeply sorry, fam, but I have just never understood the appeal of Monty Mole. He's one of the most boring Mario enemies to date, and I'm glad that he's never been in a mainline Mario Kart, because looking at him in tour... Eh. Sure he has some cute animations when you do tricks, but when you're just racing, the back of his head is so plain. You're just staring at this little brown nub. Why would I ever want to play as this nub? Again, the cute trick animations give him some points, but he's not really a character that appeals to my tastes. 
Mario Kart 7 took a couple of big swings with their limited roster slots, and in my opinion, the least successful of said swings was Lakitu. Turning the Mario Kart referee into a playable racer while also keeping him as the referee is just... I don't know, a bit weird for me. I never really liked the idea of having him playable or separating him from his iconic cloud, which is what I always associate Lakitu's with. And while it was still kinda novel to see him playable in 7, he's absolutely one of the most forgettable characters in all of 8. Partially due to the expanded roster burying him a bit, but also partially because I feel like his animations in 7 were just a bit more charming. Especially his finger guns when he wins a race, just look at that swagger. So yeah, not a bad character, I can see the appeal. He just doesn't really work for me that well. Alright, here we go guys. My most cancelable take in this whole video, probably. I do not like Diddy Kong. He's alright in the Donkey Kong series, but whenever he shows up in Smash or any Mario spinoff, I just cannot stand the little shit-eating chimp. I really wish I could give you a detailed description of why I don't like him, but I really can't say. I just find him really annoying, and it's been this way ever since I was a kid. I'm sorry, I genuinely cannot help it. I have monkey brain when it comes to my feelings on this dude. While I can't disagree with the people who say he deserves to return to mainline Mario Kart, I personally do not miss him. I nonetheless ranked him higher than I wanted to because there's nothing functionally wrong with his inclusion other than than my personal preference. I'm really, really sorry, I just can't control myself, I do not like this monkey at all. Donkey Kong Country 2 is an amazing game though. Toad! I think this is one of the characters that I have the least to say about. It's Toad, I don't know. He's been in every game, and yet I could probably count the number of times I picked him on my fingers. Like I said when I talked about the babies, I don't really like small characters that much, and there's just not a whole lot Toad has to offer. But much like Peach, his voice in Mario Kart 64 is kind of enjoyable, and he did give us Toad Circuit. It's Toad Circuit! Yeah, Toad Circuit! Toad Circuit! Which is of course my friends and I obsess over ironically, because it's one of the lamest choices Nintendo could have put in the booster course paths. But we love it because of its lameness. It's like the Morbius of Mario Kart courses. Like hell yeah! Toad <laughs> Circuit Sweep, baby! Alright, so Captain Toad is in tour and he has his own unique emblem, so I guess he's considered a unique character rather than an alt costume. I even checked with you guys on Twitter just to be sure, and you pretty heartily agreed. So Captain Toad gets to be on this list, and he has no unique animations. He's functionally just Toad with a headlamp. Sorry, I love the little guy, he has a great game, but I can't really rank him much higher than regular Toad, sadly. Still Nintendo, add a Captain Toad costume to 8 Deluxe, that'd be cool. In fact, give Toad alternate colors like Yoshi and Shy Guy have, why not? Spoiler for later in the list, I guess, but I really love the Nintendo guest stars added to Mario Kart 8. But there's one of them I honestly don't like and never play as, and that's Villager Boy. It all comes down to his design, like what is this? What's with the bed head and the eyelashes on the bottom of the eye and the pajamas he's wearing? Why not put in the iconic villager design from Smash? Or if you want to be original, why not do something actually visually appealing? He still gets points for being in the game at all, it's a cool guest character with cool animations, but I straight up do not pick him since Villager Girl is right there. Like I said, Mario Kart Arcade GP 1 and 2 are the only games in the series that I haven't played, but just looking at footage of him, I can safely say that I do not care for Blinky very much. I don't really like how his original design was translated into Mario Kart, plus the voice they gave him is kinda generic and a bit annoying. At least staring at this red nub is better than staring at the brown nub that is Monty Mole, but yeah, I can't really say Blinky appeals to me that much. Kamek a character that was cut from Mario Kart 64 before release only to finally get their shot in the mobile game. I never really liked Kamek all that much, I find him kinda boring in most Mario games, and he doesn't really do a whole lot in tour other than shake his wand around. Maybe if this was a console Mario game, they could add some detail like magic effects to go with the wand moving, but as is, Kamek does little to impress and I don't really need to see him in a mainline Mario Kart anytime soon. I've always been rather indifferent to Birdo personally. I think they have some cute animations and they're definitely a rather unique addition compared to some of the other bullshit filler characters, but I still don't really pick Birdo that often. I don't know, I'd be happy to see them back in modern mainline Mario Kart, but I'm also not really losing sleep over their absence. Anyway, that's all the C tiers. Now let's get into the B tiers, the characters I like and pick fairly often. 
Koopa Troopa is a long time mainstay in the series, and while I don't really care for small characters, I still give this little guy some love now and again, mainly because his voice is just so cute. He's a simple yet more than worthy addition to the roster, and that's pretty much all I have to say about him. Okay, so a few days before I started writing this, the Doctors were apparently added to Mario Kart Tour, and I guess they count as their own characters because they have a unique emblem? Whatever, I'm ranking them all in the same spot. They have some cool, uniquely stiff animations that fit the Doctor theme pretty well. Plus, I like the pill item they throw, and playing as Dr. Mario in particular feels cool because of his Smash Bros. prestige. These are nice additions, I like them. Hate on the Koopalines all you want, but I actually quite enjoy their addition to Mario Kart, and I cycle through playing as all of them, except Wendy, pretty often. Larry's probably my least played among the male Koopa kids. He's always felt a bit generic in comparison to the others, but I still really like him. He's a nice middle of the road pick with a cool blue shell and mohawk. I'll give him a pass. Okay, so Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. We might as well cover them both together since they're so similar. It's very cool that they're both in Mario Kart, even if it's just the arcade games, but much like Blinky, they kinda have these weird, annoying voices that I don't really vibe with. And being exclusive to the arcade games does drag them down a bit since those games don't let the characters pop off with crazy animations. Also, I really don't like Pac-Man's ghostly adventures design, and that's the one they use for Arcade GPDX, so I just don't pick him in that game. Again, good additions, but not the best execution. Miss Pac-Man ranks a smidge higher, because at least she never had a terrible ghostly adventures design in Mario Kart. Bowser Jr. is another one of those mainstay Mario characters that I'm kind of indifferent to, but I'll definitely give him a play in Mario Kart every now and again. He's got cute voice lines and even cuter animations in 8 Deluxe in particular. Patrick actually pointed out to me the other day that Bowser Jr. perfectly fits the definition of the Scrunkly, something that's mischievous and naughty, but also adorable at the same time. You gotta give it up for the Scrunkly, come on. Lemmy is another adorable little scrunkly. He's one of the more flavorful Kooplings, what with his cool rainbow mohawk and wacky animations. Though again, I generally prefer the bigger Kooplings with better speed. I'll still throw Lemmy a bone every once in a while though. Toadette is pretty unique, cause she was actually invented for Mario Kart to be Toad's partner in Double Dash. And she's really come a long way since, working her way up to eventually appear in a mainline Mario game. A feat that Waluigi hasn't even accomplished yet. Keyword is yet. I've always liked Toadette, between her bright colors scheme and cute little pigtails, and she's definitely a character I get some use out of every now and again. Iggy is another very flavorful Koopling that I get a good deal of use out of. I just don't really know what else to say. There's seven of these guys, and Iggy's dead center in my ranking of how enjoyable they are in Mario Kart. He's another cool, enjoyable character. There you go. Next. Okay. Turns out I was actually lying about Paratroopa being the second most obscure Mario Kart character after Tony Soprano. Because there's actually a character so obscure that I completely forgot about them in my initial draft of this list. Mamichi, who only appeared in Mario Kart GP2. They are a Tamagotchi. Yeah, remember Tamagotchi? That was a thing that existed. In fact, it existed so hard that it got representation in one of the best-selling franchises in all of gaming. You have to give Mamichi points for the sheer audacity of being a Tamagotchi in a Mario Kart game. But at the same time, I also really enjoy what I've seen of them in secondhand footage. Their design and voice are pretty charming, which I think makes up for the fact that they don't have a lot of cool animations since they're restricted to the arcade game. Overall, this is probably one of my favorite arcade exclusive characters. I sincerely doubt they'll ever make it into a mainline Mario Kart, but I'm happy they made it in at all. Look gang, I know everyone likes to complain about the oversaturation of Mario's and Peach's on the roster. I get it. I really do. But I'm part of the problem. I picked this lovely Tanuki boy like it's nobody's business. Tanuki Mario is not only adorable, but he has a ton of awesome animations that I love seeing in races. Especially when he turns into a statue, like good lord, they did not need to go that hard for what was essentially just a filler pick, meant to pad out the Triforce DLC pack in the original Mario Kart 8. I went into that pack primarily excited for Link, as most people were, but I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this lovable Squunklo as well. Ludwig is probably my favorite Koopling in the actual Mario platformers themselves. He just seems so elegant and quietly sinister. But I'll admit, a bit of his uniquely dark charm seems to be lost in translation in Mario Kart. He's still a great character to play as with a cool as hell design, but his voice clips in 8 are fairly generic and leave a lot to be desired. Still a great pick overall. Now we're gonna get into a line of standard safe picks. Characters that are incredibly recurring in the Mario universe to the point where their inclusion in Mario Kart really isn't special. Special. Yet, I still pick them fairly often because they're very cool characters in general. Let's start with King Koopa himself, Bowser. 
Admittedly, playing as Bowser at all was a pretty novel concept in the older Mario Kart games since that just never happened. But now he's playable in every spin-off under the sun and the novelty has worn off a bit. Not enough to make him any less awesome of a character though. He's still a rad choice and playing as him is a big power move. On a regular Mario character ranking, he'd be way higher, but in the realm of Mario Kart, there's other cooler and more unique additions. The fact that she says that every time you switch characters in Double Dash is honestly one of the funniest things I've ever heard. The sheer manic energy of Daisy cannot be overstated. She's like the Najami Osana of the Mario universe. While she's at her best and most unhinged in Double Dash, I really like her in the other Mario Kart games as well. She basically negates any desire I would ever have to play as Peach. She just has a more vibrant personality and color design and her voice lines are always killer. Yeah, I mean, she's Daisy. She's pretty epic. Moving on. And now we get to Donkey Kong, the biggest meme in the entire Mario universe. Universe. Yeah, his inclusion is pretty standard and not all that special nowadays, but he's always been a consistently fun character to play as, with funny voice lines and really expressive animations. He also gets bonus points for having the best ass in all of Mario Kart. Plus his animations in 8 in particular are just really off the wall and loony in the best way possible. He even kinda sorta dabs? It's not quite a dab, but it has the spirit. Let him do a real dab in the next game Nintendo, he can pull it off. And rounding out this line of standard favorites is Yoshi. He's Yoshi. Everyone loves him. I'll always have a soft spot for this adorable little dude and his cute little sound effects, but what really elevates him is his alternate colors in 8. They're all really fun to switch between and they add a ton of replayability to his character. Ah, but you know what? How can I play this? There's no crafted world costume. Oh well. Even though we can't play as this extremely visually appealing costume in Mario Kart, the alt colors are pretty enjoyable. Also, I know I'm not factory Mario Kart tour costumes into the this, but I really like the existence of Kangaroo Yoshi. Just wanted to put that out there. He's epic. It took me a really long time to come around on Wiggler, one of those big swing characters that Mario Kart 7 added. In this case, the big swing ended up being a miss because he never returned in 8 or even Tour. And I'm not surprised because I don't think he was particularly popular. I certainly never played as him as a kid, but in hindsight, I think he's one of the most inventive additions to the roster ever. The sight of his forearms is a bit distracting at first and takes some getting used to, but they really make him stand out. So does the fact that he starts turning red whenever he gets hit with an item. That, coupled with his mellow and laid back voice, makes for a Mario Kart character unlike any other. I'd love for him to make a comeback. Even so, something about seeing him shrunken down in a cart next to giant wigglers on Maple Treeway just feels illegal somehow. Wario may be a typical mainstay Mario character, but playing as him just feels exciting and fresh nonetheless, despite the fact that he's been in every Mario Kart since 64. I will never get tired of picking this greedy son of a bitch and hearing his glorious fart horn. I don't like fart jokes unless Wario's doing them. Sorry, that's just how it is. Wario's awesome, we all know it, I don't need to sell you on how cool he is. Again, a bit lower than I put him on a regular Mario character ranking video, but only because there's cooler, more out-of-the-box additions to the series. I never used to be a big fan of Morton Koopa Jr., but man, did Mario Kart really turn my interest in him around. His beady little eyes, his monochrome color scheme, his super silly voice, he really feels distinct from all the rest of the Kooplings, and he's quickly become one of my favorites among them. Plus, after you get used to the shrunken down, disproportionate versions of these guys in Smash, it's nice to play Mario Kart to be reminded that no, Morton is a chonky boy, and that's why he's so awesome. I refuse to let the Dry Bones fandom die out. I am a true boner. Wait, what? What did he say? There's something so awesome about playing as a skeletal Koopa. He has some of the crispiest and most satisfying sound effects in the whole game. Plus, I love all the little things with him. I love his dance on the Mario Kart Wii character select screen before you pick him. Or his animation in 8 Deluxe where he's gotta keep his head on. He's a delightful inclusion that doesn't feel like a lazy clone in the slightest. I really enjoy him. Hammer Bro was supposed to be a Wii, but he was ultimately cut. Which is such a shame, because I've always loved these aggravating f***ers. And driving as one seems like it will be a dream come true. Well, now the dream is true. For everyone who managed to pull him in the gacha game, which I sure haven't. Please put him in a mainline Mario Kart already, he's such a good fit. Please do it, Nintendo, I'm begging you. Anyway, yeah, Hammer Bro and all his variants, those being Fire, Ice, and Boomerang, are a very fitting and fun addition to Mario Kart. The voice lines and animations are all on point, and overall these are some characters I'd love the chance to play as someday. Too bad Mario 
Mario Kart Tour is classified as torture in my state, otherwise I might play it more. Anyway, let's take a break from Mario Kart tiers for a second and look at an S tier VPN. Surfshark VPN. I mean, it literally starts with the letter S. There's no debate to be had here. Surfshark is an incredible product that encrypts your data and protects you online. Surfshark VPN allows you to access geo-restricted content, meaning you can trick your browser into thinking you're in another country, thus allowing you to access content you couldn't get otherwise. That way, you don't have to physically travel to another country to watch that country's exclusive Netflix or Disney Plus content, for example. So don't worry. Any epic, exclusive Toad Circuit content you want to watch can easily be accessed even if you live in Yoshi Valley. I don't know why you would live there, I mean, what is there to do besides stare at the giant spinning egg all day, but you do you! You can also use Surfshark and its Surfshark alert system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Surfshark alert scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so they can take action, which is an absolutely invaluable feature. Wario isn't getting his greedy hands on your private data anytime soon. Surfshark is also totally unlimited, meaning you can use it on as many devices as you like, even all at the same time. No other VPN allows this. Go to surfshark.dl slash Rillis and enter promo code Rillis to get 83% off and 3 extra months of Surfshark VPN for free. It's an amazing deal, and it's even better because it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can cancel during those 30 days and get your money back. If you're looking for a great VPN, there's no reason not to give Surfshark a try. Once again, head to surfshark.dl slash Rillis and enter the promo code Rillis. Have a great time with Surfshark VPN. Alright, now it's time for the A tiers. These are characters I play as a ton and overall love the inclusion of. So, let's a go. Shy Guy is just so easy to like, man. Such a simple yet endearing as all hell design with hilarious noises and quite a unique history in the series. Debuting in Mario Kart DS as a character exclusive to download play, before finally gaining a slot on the big boy roster in 7, and getting the same cool alternate color treatment as Yoshi in 8. What a glow up! If I ever want to play as a small character, Shy Guy is my immediate go-to. He's adorable yet cool at the same time, with the alt colors offering tons of replayability to boot. Also, if you're curious, green Shy Guy and Black Yoshi are my favorites. And also I like his chef costume and tour because it reminds me of Orpheus from Hadestown. Okay, moving on. Alright, so this is probably the real most cancelable take on the whole list. But I love the inclusion of Metal Mario. Back in 7, I didn't see him as a lazy palette swap, even though he totally was that. I saw him as a deep cut reference to Super Smash Bros, since he appears as a boss in the single player modes of 64 and Melee, and a really fucking badass and intimidating boss at that. Yeah, he's just Mario but silver, but I don't know, I just found him so cool. His entrance in Melee goes so unnecessarily hard, like damn. Plus he was in Mario Golf and Dr. Mario 64, so like, he's a legit established character from the old days who's now been brought back in Mario Kart. This isn't just a lame, lazy power-up version of Mario, like Fire Mario or something. This is a legit character with legit history in the Mario universe. And he was absolutely my main in 7. I didn't know he had the best stats as a kid. I just thought he was the coolest addition with an awesome distorted voice and clever voice lines. He says Mia Mama instead of Mama Mia because he's the Bizarro Mario. Like, come on, that's fun. He's a fun addition. But, yeah, I'll admit, I knocked him down a few slots because I think the novelty kind of wore off when 8 rolled around. Plus, he contributed to the existence of Pink Gold Peach, which is absolutely an unforgivable sin. Gold Mario's kind of cool, but he's also just an alt costume, so I don't have to rank him separately. Bottom line is, Metal Mario is an awesome inclusion, and I'm tired of pretending he's not. I love Taiko no Tatsujin. It's such an endearing rhythm game series, and the fact that Don Chan made it into Mario Kart GP DX is just so delightful. It doesn't look like this drum boy should even fit in a cart, but he inexplicably makes it work. Yeah, I just have a big smile on my face whenever <laughs> I play as him. He's endearing as all heck, and I love picking him whenever I go to the arcade and get my ass handed to me in this game by Patrick and Chris. Inkling Boy kinda sorta has the same issue as Villager Boy, but to a far lesser extent. I don't particularly care for the tied up tentacles in his hair, but other than that, there's nothing wrong with his design. It's very good and I like his alts as well. But like, Inkling Girl is right there and her design is just better. So yeah, I don't pick Inkling Boy too often, which is why he's this low. But he's still an amazing, incredibly fitting addition to the roster, with voice lines and animations that feel straight out of Splatoon. Great stuff. 
Nabbit is a character that's just begging to be put in every Mario spinoff under the sun. And while he sadly wasn't added to 8 Deluxe when he could have easily been there, at least he got a chance in Tour. Not only are his animations and voice lines here really charming, but I just find it so funny that he holds onto his bag during the entire race and he will not drop it under any circumstances. My dude is committed as all hell to not dropping this bag, and I just find that so charming. He's a great addition to the series and I need him in mainline Mario Kart pronto. Alright, I'll admit, my Luigi bias propelled him a lot higher than he probably should have been on this list. Yeah, you can play as Luigi in just about any Mario-themed game under the sun, but he's f***ing Luigi, man. I pick him all the time regardless of there being cooler deep cuts on the roster. Besides, if I ranked him any lower than A tier, he'd give me one of his death glares, and then I'd be dead, and then there'd be no list. Luigi makes the top 20 or nothing. I don't think there's any complaints with that. He is one of the best characters in fiction, after all. Charge and Chuck is another awesome addition to Tor that I need in mainline Mario Kart yesterday. He's a jock bro with absolutely zero chill in his animations, flexing or flutter kicking on you every opportunity he gets. The idea of playing as this football loving lunatic is just so tantalizing, and I have no doubt that I'd race with him over and over again if I were only given the opportunity to. When I was a kid, Miis were the shit. I loved the idea of putting yourself or your favorite character in precarious situations. And what's more precarious than Mario Kart? With that said, these guys absolutely peaked in Wii for a number of reasons. Not only did Wii give them unique voices and pronounced weight classes based on how big or small you make them in the Mii Maker, but whenever you play as them, the faces on statues in the different courses are replaced with random Mii faces. That's charming as all hell, and it's a concept that never came back. Miis are fine and sad but I don't really like the fact that they're forced to wear helmets in 8, obscuring the back of their head, which is what you see most of the time during races. It's like, why did I pick this character if I can't see who they are that often? They kind of make up for it with the cool amiibo costumes, I especially like the Mega Man, Kirby, and Pikmin ones, but locking the only cool feature of Miis in this game behind some plastic shit isn't great. Still, we had it good in Wii with these guys, which is why they rank so high. Also, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever unlocked the B racing outfit for the me as a kid. So, oops. I love what a dumb inclusion PD Piranha is. He's so big that his head partially obscures your view of the track, but that's so funny. I love the fact that the developers didn't take his gigantic size into account when adding him to the game. I fucking love joke characters. I want to fucking play as a character with a ginormous intentional handicap that makes their inclusion absolutely hilarious. Maybe it's for the best that he was never included in any game since Double Dash. Not even Tor. <laughs> Because I feel like nowadays they'd shrink him down to make him a bit more viable and usable. Whatever, Nintendo. Give me impractical big-headed Petey Piranha or give me death. <laughs> also, the character's really cool in Sunshine and Brawl and all the other games he's in. I like him a lot, so yeah. Donkey Kong Jr. did not rank very high in my initial draft of this list, because why would he? He's a completely irrelevant character that deserves to be stuck in Super Mario Kart because modern Donkey Kong is way more base than Poggers. But then I remembered that they put Jr. in Tor, and holy shit, this is amazing! A 16-bit sprite surrounded by modern graphics is just such a fun idea. His animations and sound effects look great, especially his victory music ripped straight out of Super. This is so much better than if they just brought him back by giving him a modern 3D design. And it's another character I'd love the chance to play as in a mainline Mario Kart. Seriously, why the f*** does Tor get all the good stuff when it's practically impossible to acquire said good stuff because of the gotcha mechanics? I am going to blow a gasket. Dry Bowser is such a real one, man. Now this is how you do a clone character. Such an awesome callback to New Super Mario Bros. with such badass sound effects and animations. I enjoyed him in Wii, but 8 is where he was really allowed to pop the f*** off. His glowing magma shell in this game is such a cool effect to stare at during a race, and it cemented his status as one of the most badass heavyweights in Mario Kart history. Also, I really love the irony of him being added into Mario Kart 8 via the Animal Crossing DLC pack, because these things go together so well. As someone who never grew up with Mario Kart DS, I keep asking the people I know who did, why the fuck was Rob in this game? And nobody has an answer for me. This is perhaps the most inexplicable inclusion in Mario Kart history, and they included a fucking Tamagotchi. Seriously, I can't process this. Not only was this three years before he appeared in Smash Bros, but this was in a game that only had room for 12 roster slots. This game foregoed Koopa Troopa, Diddy Kong, Bowser Jr., Birdo, etc., all for the sake of adding in the toy robot from the NES days that wasn't even really a video game character. 
But you know what? I adore out of left field inclusions, and this is no exception. You better believe I'm picking Rob anytime I play DS. His animations and model are on point, and this is just such a deliciously nonsensical inclusion that I can't help but adore it. Speaking of which, as a kid, I could not stand the inclusion of Honey Queen, but now I have truly seen the light. I used to be pissed that they put in such a ridiculous obscure Mario Galaxy character that needed to be shrunken down to a ridiculous degree in order to fit into a cart, but nowadays, that's exactly why I love her inclusion. I love bees, I love Mario Galaxy, I love when royal characters are allowed to cut loose and have fun for a change, and I love batshit insane character choices that don't make a lick of sense. Honey Queen checks all the boxes, to the point where if I ever revisit Seven, I'm always picking her instead of Metal Mario. I want her back in the series so badly, you guys have no idea. Though, it is still pretty raw that they cut Waluigi out of Seven, but that's not her fault. Honey Queen did nothing wrong. Saw we I dis Diddy Kong are we are guys. If it's any consolation, I think Dixie's pretty awesome. I've always really liked her, and she's very fun and expressive in tour. She's another awesome addition that just makes sense for mainline Mario Kart. Though, I guess if we're gonna add her, then we gotta have Diddy back first. Okay, sure, whatever. I don't care. All I know is Dixie's awesome, and she makes Diddy obsolete in Tropical Freeze. She should be in Smash right now, and she's amazing. Okay, moving on. I think everyone pretty much unanimously loves Pauline and agrees that she deserves to be a mainstay in Mario spinoffs. She was the first brand new unique character to get added to tour, and she definitely deserves that status. Playing as her has gotta be awesome as shit. I sure wish I could play as her, you stupid fucking gotcha piece of shit! Yeah, she's awesome. The only thing keeping her out of the top 10 is that I just don't like her hair animation in tour. Something about it looks so off. Like, why is only the bottom part moving? I don't know, it's kind of a natural looking, but her trick animations are great, and she's an awesome character. So yeah, pretty amazing inclusion overall. Barging into the top 10, yet coming up just short of the coveted S tier slot, we got my boy Roy. 8 is the game that finally enlightened me to the fact that Roy is by far the best Koopling. He is the pinnacle of character design, what with his awesome purple shell and pink shades. His voice is gruff, yet chill at the same time, perfectly conveying what a bodacious dude this guy is. In fact, playing as him reminds me a lot of another Mario Kart character. The character I haven't played as since... Eh, it doesn't really matter. Roy is awesome. Definitely worthy of a slot in the top 10. Only brought down a bit by the fact that I enjoy playing as the other Koopalings as well, meaning I'll sometimes take some potential quality Roy time and pick Morton or Ludwig instead. Still, cool as shit dude. And now for the S tiers. The characters that I will always love and immediately gravitate towards. Pouring literal hours into them because of how cool their inclusions are. Starting with... My boy Link was always a rather unconventional pick, despite how iconic he is. The idea of seeing him on a motorcycle just seemed too weird to a lot of people. Until Breath of the Wild literally added a motorcycle and then it's like, oh well, I guess now it's okay. Yeah, I was always going to adore Link's inclusion, what with Zelda being my favorite franchise and all. He ranks a tad lower than some of the other guest stars because he does feel a bit out of place, but you can't deny the awesomeness of seeing him pull out the Master Sword of the Triforce during his trick animations, and being able to swap between his Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild designs in 8 Deluxe is an amazing detail. I still prefer the OG Green Tunic, but both versions of him get a lot of play from me. The highest ranked Tor exclusive character is King Baba. He is the Tor character I'm more jealous of than anyone else, and I just know I would pick him day in and day out if he was in 8 Deluxe. I mean, look at him. He's just the perfect specimen. The combination of his round physique, prominent crown, and Pringles ass mustache makes for one of the most inspired additions to any Mario Kart roster. He has a unique fun voice, and he's just iconic enough to undoubtedly deserve a roster slot, yet just obscure enough to feel like a cool choice in comparison to the characters that are basically guaranteed to be in every game. I will not be able to sleep well at night until King bob is safely added to a mainline Mario Kart. All will finally be well in the world once that is achieved. And now we finally get to my favorite Mario character of all time. Waluigi, baby! The surge in Waluigi's popularity over the years has been nothing short of magical. And despite the fact that he's playable in just about every spinoff you could ask for him to be in, well, 
almost every spinoff, he's still an easy go-to pick for me. His saturation in the Mario series does hold him back from the number one spot he so clearly deserves, the very spot I'd give him if this was just a straight up Mario character ranking, but he's still awesome enough to belong here in the top tier. From his iconic horn in 8 to the wacky bag of tricks he can perform, I will literally never get tired of this lanky, beautiful, perfect man. Villager Girl is such a lovely inclusion to Mario Kart. She has a very nice hairstyle and dress, adorable animations and sound effects that reference Animal Crossing so well, and overall she just fits right into the Mario universe. She's just so bright and cheerful, what with her happy face and bright pink hair. Playing as her just puts me in a good mood and I pick her a lot. You see that, villager boy? This is how high you could be on the list if you bothered to comb your hair and change out of your pajamas, you piece of shit. Talk about a guest character that just fits in perfectly. Inkling Girl's inclusion is rad as all hell. What with her oversized headphones, bright orange hair, and hella expressive animations. Just another delightful guest character that feels right at home in Mario Kart, while still bringing the amazing crossover edge we've come to expect from a character like this. One of my most played characters in 8 Deluxe, for sure. Why do I love playing as Isabel so much? Maybe it's because unlike the Inklings, Villagers, and even Link to some extent, she's an actual character and not just a self-insert for the player. I adore Isabel, as most Animal Crossing fans do, and she has some of that Honey Queen charm, where it's nice to see a character you wouldn't expect to see cutting loose actually doing that and racing for a change. She works so hard for you, she definitely needs this time off to pelt plumbers with turtle shells in a go-kart, come on. Isabel was undoubtedly my main for a while there in 8 Deluxe. I remember I was playing as her in college one time, and some guy made fun of me for it, so then I proceeded to beat him in every race with her, and that shut him up pretty quickly. Isabel is fucking rad as shit. Remember that, kids. Okay, look, I'm not someone with a ton of waifus, but even I have to draw the line and accept the literal space goddess as my personal lord and savior. Ever since her debut, Rosalina has always been the best princess in the Mario games, and one of my favorite characters in the whole series. And it's no different in Mario Kart. Even though it's a given for her to be in every Mario spinoff nowadays, I nonetheless pick her all the time, because why wouldn't I? She's a popular pick for me in 7 and 8, but the main reason she ranks this high is because of how amazing it was to see her in Mario Kart Wii. Her inclusion mere months after her introduction in Mario Galaxy, with a special unlock criteria of needing a Mario Galaxy save file to get her super quickly in this game? I don't know, that just felt like such a special detail to me. She also had that whole Honey Queen, Regal character cutting loose appeal, plus her voice was so unique and soothing in this entry. And best of all, she had a Luma following her around during races. Such an amazing detail that never got added again after this game. That's a shame, but she's still a top tier pick for me. One of the all-time greats. King Boo is, in my humble opinion, one of the most perfect Mario Kart characters of all time. Everything I said about King Babam applies to this guy tenfold. Such a simple yet perfect design that conveys everything you need to know about him. Such delightful voice lines that straddle the line between creepy and goofy so expertly. Such an iconic yet not overused character to spice up every roster he appears in. I love how he sticks his tongue out when you're making sharp turns with a bike and Wii. Hell, I just love everything about him. He's been a consistent go-to character for me in every game he's in, and I've finally settled on him as my main for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There's only one thing that could change that status, and that would be the return of my number one pick. Don't act like you didn't know it was gonna be him. Funky Kong will forever be the greatest character ever put in a Mario Kart game. As a kid, I didn't even know he had the best stats. I always just picked him because he was Funky Kong, man. He had the coolest design, coupled with absolutely zero chill in his voice lines, which are so filled with energy and so iconic. He belongs in the Mario universe due to its heavy overlap with Donkey Kong, but he's still disconnected enough to feel like a cool crossover pick. I mean, really, what other Mario spin-offs do you get to play as this funky monkey in? The list is pretty damn short, which is why his inclusion in Wii needs to be savored for all it's worth. I can't fully describe what an incomparable pleasure it is to play as Funky Kong. You just had to be there, man. You had to be there to bear witness to the most bodacious dude ever included in a racing game, let alone a Mario game. Funky Kong is God's greatest creation, and I would do anything to get him back in mainline Mario Kart. Him being in tour is a good start, but it cannot be where his story ends. Good night, Tri-State area. Stay funky.